Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huyen Duet Dao, and I'm speaking with... François Blaouz. François, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Uh, I'm now based in San Francisco for months, uh, and I work at uh, Instacart. Uh, by the way, we are hiring. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got started on Android uh, a while ago, uh, when simply I needed a better phone than uh, the dumb phone I had at the time, and the Nexus One was just out, so was a good I started. <laughs> I started hacking uh, that way. So actually, I met Francois last year uh, at DroidCon Italy, yeah. and I found out that we have kind of a common, I guess, love in Android, <laughs> and uh, that is with custom view groups and custom layouts. So for anyone in the audience who maybe doesn't have experience with, say, custom layouts, mm -hmm. Francois, what is a custom layout um, as, you, uh, as you define it? Yeah, um, it's basically um, throwing away um, the base uh, widgets you have in the platform, like linear layout, relative layout, and so on, uh, and extend it, view group yourself, uh, on making the layouting logic uh, from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, more work <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, than, uh, yeah, than just uh, writing an XML. Um, so most of the time, uh, you don't want to just, uh, OK, I, uh, ignore what the platform provides. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's only when uh, you want to do something really specific or if you run uh, SysTrace and say, OK, uh, I'm spending way too, more t too much time uh, during layouting mm -hmm. uh, than you, that you need to look at your options. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, custom layouts were by far the, the best option. Um, since you do everything yourself, uh, you can make assumptions uh, that uh, general widget like creative layouts can't make mm -hmm. about your design because you, you know what kind of layout you are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can take uh, shortcuts uh, and be way more efficient and do as little operation as possible. That's a good point, and I think mm -hmm. that's a good differentiation that you make that the platform widgets are general purpose. Yeah. Like they're meant to be kind of fitting very general cases like a linear layout, relative layout, but as you said, um, they can't make assumptions about what views you have and what you want to do with them. So they have a lot of overhead or they have specific ways of doing things. But yeah, I, I absolutely love it too. Like, and I've run into similar where I had performance, but because I knew exactly what I wanted out of my components, I could do all of that myself and save a lot of a time. Um, so what are the basic steps to, I mean, like, like say like you made a decision, I want to do a custom <laughs> layout. What are the first steps to, to kind of starting with a custom um, layout? The first step uh, is probably to look at uh, the platform uh, not yes. something like uh, yeah, linear layout or, uh, or relative layout because it's way too complex. It's like uh, several thousand uh, lines of code, uh, but something simple like frame layout. So you can see uh, how it works uh, mm -hmm. quite simply uh, and see that, okay, uh, first you need to measure uh, your uh, widgets and then you need to lay out them. And uh, by looking at how the platform does it, you can understand what are the contracts, the different uh, methods, and so on, and see uh, really how it works. Um, and which is the best way just to, to start writing code. Um, it's very simple. If you do something wrong in your layouting code, uh, the view will not show. So right, it's easy. Yeah. It's, it's a very yeah. easy to debug. Yeah. Just like if it doesn't show up, then you're probably doing something wrong. But if it does show up, then yay, you're probably <laughs> exactly. on the right track. What caused you? What was the first time that you realized that you had to do a custom custom layout? Um, so for some time, uh, we were a bit frustrated with uh, performances of uh, our application, mm -hmm. uh, and we knew that okay, at, at least some of it is new is due to layouting and again uh, you need to, to bench your performances because you can't guess this kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, and with uh, the material design of the application uh, it was a good way to sell, to sell it to the product team mm -hmm. uh, and uh, be able to start experimenting and uh, yeah doing it custom was a good choice at the time um, but uh, like uh, on implementation choices, uh, it's a trade-off. So you get performances. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really go faster than doing it yourself, uh, except maybe for um, asynchronous yellowing, but it's another. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most, I guess, surprising or 
uh, interesting thing that you learned um, as you were starting to work with custom custom layouts? Um, well, I guess the most interesting part. So you do on one hand the layouting, and since you are already writing view code, you do also some custom drawing yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really interesting in order to understand how the platform works mm -hmm. and getting your insight of uh, on how like text view or image view work, mm -hmm. uh, and helping you debug uh, problems uh, even without writing anything custom just in how the platform works. Because uh, that way you know um, how uh, request layouting works and um, so on. Uh, you you have, having a good idea of how the view frameworks uh, performs uh, is usually useful to understand, okay, what I'm doing is does not work because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned benchmarking as being really important, um, yep. and that, that makes a lot of sense because you wouldn't want to over-optimize or put yourself yep. through the trouble of making custom yeah. layout if you don't have to. Um, what are your kind of, what's your process for benchmarking? Ah, uh, six twice. Six twice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. that's it's really intimidating. Yeah. Like, do you have any like tips? I guess. Um, uh, it it is really intim intimidating. Uh, it's not that bad though. So yeah, uh, when you run SysTrace, if you have never done it, uh, it outputs a big HTML file. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess um, the first thing you need to look at uh, if you are working with performances um, is uh, the 16 millisecond mm. interval. Uh, because this is uh, the limit when uh, the framework uh, asks you for uh, the draw commands, and if you don't have them, uh, it will just draw the current frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you drop uh, too many frames, uh, it's very visible to the user. Uh, so that's probably the, the first thing you need to, uh, to look at in SysTwice, and it's very visible. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, SysTwice has improved a lot uh, throughout the years. Really? Yeah. And now it even tells you, uh, okay, you, you might have a problem with, uh, let's say, a uh, big uh, bitmap uh, upload or stuff like that. Uh, so you don't even have to do that much uh, work yourself when you see uh, that uh, Systrive tells you, okay, you have 50 events of uh, uh, slow layouts uh, during uh, one second. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, I, I have a layouting issue. So nice. So yeah. it's not so much as you have to you have to interpret less, but it actually specifically yeah. tells you, hey, there's like <laughs> this might be a thing. Oh, that's really great. Have you ever used any of the other um, like a resource monitors, like the GPU profiler and things like that? Or do you think SysTrace is kind of? Uh, thankfully, I did not have uh, specific issues mm -hmm. uh, with GPU so far. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know it happens like uh, blending mode or uh, blur. That's uh, can be really so. Yeah, the fancy things <laughs> on, with yeah, the on some devices. Uh, thankfully, no, I did not have this issue yet. <laughs> nice. Uh, now, see, you know, we're kind of a few years past in mm -hmm. material design and we have more components and we have constraint layout. Do you still find yourself using custom layouts a lot? Um, so, yeah, um, so again, it's always a trade off. Uh, so, you get performances, but uh, well, it's not really too hard to write a uh, custom uh, view group when you are used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it is uh, really hard to write it, uh, to read it afterwards and yes. to maintain it. Yes. Um, so, um, it can be problematic when you are working on a big team. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, uh, constraint layout is really interesting mm -hmm. um, because it's not going to be as performant as uh, writing everything yourself against a general widget. It can't be uh, as performant as something you have written yourself, um, but it's really fast for something general. Uh, and also devices have evolved a lot. So layouting on uh, devices that is at least on Lollipop um, should not be an issue in uh, almost all cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so constraint layout right now is really interesting and um, what I really like about it uh, is that uh, okay, there are alternatives to constraint layout but it's the only one that gives you uh, really great tools to see uh, how your layout is working. So, mm -hmm. okay, I have a chain of items, I have a constraint on, on uh, left and right and so on. Uh, you just have to give a glance at the editor and okay, you know what is going on. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's a really good point too. And that I, it's kind of funny because I feel like a lot of people don't like visual editors mm -hmm. when it comes to UIs. But you can, but but with like, like you said, um, mm -hmm. now with constraint layout, you can actually see it much more clearly. And yeah, yeah when you have even 
even, I mean, we have a, when you have a custom view group, it can be hard, like you said, to yeah. see. But even like if you have a really big XML file, sometimes you have no idea what's going oh, yeah. on. But the visual editor does help with that. Yeah, um, and again, if you are on a big team and you need to modify uh, this very dense uh, widget to add something uh, with uh, Visual Editor, it's easy to see uh, at a glance how uh, the layout works and so how your change is going to impact everything else. Um, and even if you really want to write XML, and uh, we, you should take the time to learn the editor, but if you want to write XML, it's fine. Uh, it's still very useful to be able to, to see the result directly. Mm -hmm. So just to go back though, I mean, like I still love um, custom layouts and, and things like that, and I, I think they're still, I think they still, they still feel pr pretty relevant. Do you agree? Like even if, like again, yeah. for custom behaviors, yeah. um, what do you think is like the most challenging part? Is it kind of determining? Uh, I guess sizing, because I, I know like one of the biggest problems I have is like determining like what sizes everything should be and making sure that things, I guess, behave as like containers, like shrink and grow, um, but also kind of layout feels difficult. What do you, what do you find the most challenging about doing um, custom layouts? Um, uh, oh, uh, when, when do, doing layouting in general, mm -hmm. uh, is that sooner or later, uh, you are going to want uh, a very specific behavior. Um, like, okay, I want uh, this view to disappear if I don't have enough space, and uh, then the margin to change, and so on. And there is only so much that you can do uh, with uh, best intention uh, default and <laughs> something like constant layout. So sooner or later, mm -hmm. uh, you are going to have to write something custom. The talk you gave at Italy, was not about like performance in yeah. layouts as well? Um, so you should definitely um, check that out because for sure that is definitely one good reason to do custom layouts other than custom uh, behavior. Thank you so much, Francois. Oh, um, if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, probably on uh, Twitter, at uh, Francois Blavout. Uh, we'll have it link yeah. right here. <laughs> thank you so much, Francois. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.